Um, well, we spent, uh, you know, I were all pumping it, pumping it up, and then to just have that dropped yeah. in the middle of the show. But it is what it is. It happens. It wasn't the first, won't be the last, so nothing you can do about it. But thank you, John. Uh, you're a pro, Ed. You, you can do anything, man. Uh, thanks, man. Um, my question, you know, um, I, I was watching this uh, Cheap Trick uh, concert on Access TV uh, uh, the other day, and you know, it just struck me, like, I know it always comes down to money, uh, and it rhymes with bunny, but um, why why can't they get that together? And Because I love the fact that it was the same four guys, like Rush, it was the same three guys, and, 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 and the fact that they can't get it together, and it's Rick's son in there, I, I just, it really, I don't know, it just sticks in my craw, and it bothers me that, that, that they can't play together. Well, when it's when it's I understand what you're saying, because when it's that close to uh, the original band, you know, you've got you've, there's not a lot of bands where it's just one. They're down just one guy. And when that one guy is still yeah. out there, like, oh, man, it would be cool if that one guy was there, then it would be the complete band. The, the thing, you know, and that being said, Dax Nielsen, who is Rick's son, does a tremendous job. He really and he's been there for a long time. Yeah. And he can play anything and play the whole set. He's great. He really is. But I those are big shoes to play. Yeah, my my impression or my understanding about why Bunny Carlos has not been a part of Cheap Trick is apparently there was some legal stuff that went on at one point to the point that he sued them. That when they were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, they were he was suing them at that time for I don't know yeah. what money publishing or whatever was going on. Which is I've always said. An incredibly amazing thing that Cheap Trick did for their fans, where they sucked it up and played with him at the Hall of Fame, something most bands would never do given the circumstances. And they did it for the fans, and they did it the right way, and then they just went right back to what they were doing with Dax. And I wish bands like Kiss and others would have taken a note from that, because Cheap Trick showed how you do it and how you truly please the fans. But... I, I think it's a money thing or, or something to do with a legality. But the other thing about it is, my understanding is, I mean, Cheap Trick works a lot. Like, they are constantly out. I, they probably do 250 shows a year still. Maybe not that much, yeah. but they're constantly playing. And I don't think that Bunny Carlos is wanting to play that much and may physically not be physically capable of playing that much some of the people i talked to told me that when he was in the band on the last run that there was a lot of complaining and grumbling about the schedule the length of the shows it just you know some guys just can't they're not cut out for being on a bus and playing that much and working that hard at this point in their life and i think that was a factor and then some legality came into it that resulted in a lawsuit and that's where it just kind of totally went away did you did you see the dan rather interview with them i did not okay so that's that's what i was watching i mean there was a, they also showed a concert but uh they in the dan rather interview like they didn't cover that at all and it was an outstanding interview from for a cheap trick fan because and i know you you know you're when i hear you talk about cheap trick it sounds so much like what i say about them is that you know they're one of those bands that never got the credit and you know and so to see them now in the rock and roll hall of fame and then this dan rather interview was really outstanding and and, and you got to hear in depth about their career and, and got to know them a little bit but when they got the Bunny Carlos, man, it, 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 they brushed over that as quickly as possible as if he didn't exist. And that really just didn't sit well with me. So you're saying right? Dan brought it up, but they didn't want to go there. Um, they just mentioned that there was another guy who was, you know, Bunny was in the, was the original drummer and, and uh, that's it. There was nothing about whatever happened. Why isn't he there? Where they talked a little bit like, you know, when Tom... Tom Peterson left the band. They talked a little bit about that, you know, and 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 why he left the band for a little bit. I mean, they they covered that. Yeah. But well, I I think I think yeah. Well, John, I think the problem is, and thanks, John. I'm going to grab some other calls. I appreciate it. I think the problem is, it's a legal thing. There's there's a legality. The thing when I used to ask those guys about it, and I have in the past. The, the for a while the the answer was 
he's in, he's still in the band. He just doesn't tour with us or record with us. What that translates to is that he still has a business interest in the band. You see, if you're an original member and an equal partner in a band, like most bands are with the original guys, when you leave the band or are booted from the band, you can do one of two things. You can hold on to your percentage and interest in the band, or you can cut a deal with the other original members for them to buy you out. A lot of times, if you decide to hold your interest in your piece of the band, that really goes to create some great animosity down the road. Because what happens is the other guys with the current version of the band, they're out there playing and they have to account to you. Even though you're not putting the work in and you're not doing anything, they have to account to you for money, uh, percentages of shows, album sales, publishing, merch, depending upon what the deal is. <clears throat> and that can create animosity. You can imagine if you're going for 10, 15 years, but you got to cut a check every quarter to a guy who's not a part of it anymore, but because he was originally part of the, the, the sort of corporation, after a while, you, you start getting pissy about that as well. And that can result in battles over money and over control and what have you. That's incredibly common. But that, when those guys would tell me, oh, he's still in the band, he just doesn't tour or record with us anymore. To me, that's what that means. He still has his business stake in the band, but they're not working with him anymore. But you know, there are a lot of guys out there that maybe they're not physically in as good a shape anymore. Remember, he's a drummer. They have a lot of physical ailments and breakdowns. It's a physical thing to do. And those are the guys where you really start to see the cracks first when they get older. And Cheap Trick tours constantly. So if you don't have a guy who's all in and is going to grumble about that and doesn't want to work like that, and more maybe physically can't, you got to figure something out. And I think they've figured out the best thing they could with Dax, who does a great job. But you know, that, that's always been my take on the situation. I think Bunny Carlos did a solo record a few years ago, and I don't think he played drums on the entire record. I think there may have been other drummers even on the record, if I'm not mistaken. But Lou Graham with Foreigner, they've done a few reunion dates with him. I asked Lou, I said, could you at your age, given your condition, could you keep up with and tour and play every, play five nights a week like Foreigner does? And he said, no, I couldn't do that right now. There's no shame in it. He's just being honest. Hell, Mick Jones can't do it, and he's still in the band, and he shows up randomly. So it's very, very common, and especially when you're looking at drummers. But I, I get the the interest in in people wanting him back and never really having a clear idea what's going on. But I just think it has to do with business and what have you. Now with Tom Peterson, it's a little different story because Tom's back in the band. But he was out. There were two guys in Tom Peterson's spot. They had a guy named John Brandt. And then they had a guy named Pete Comida who had replaced Peterson. But those guys coming in in that situation would have been coming in as contracted hired guns. And then Tom came back and took his gig back. Let me take a break a little early here. Uh, better early for once. And we'll come back, we'll grab some more phone calls. I just, during the break, I want to just check my phone and see if there's any movement on a phoner before we completely run out of time, just so I can deal with that. So let's take a quick break. We'll come back. If not, we'll keep plowing ahead with your phone calls. And uh, again, apologies, guys. Launch his sideband British Lion, which is what the focus of him coming in will be about, of course. But we'll, of course, get some Maiden stuff and as well. And you talked to him on one of the cruises about that, right? Yeah, he's on the Monsters of Rock cruise coming up as well. He did it a couple years ago. He had a great time with his band, British Lion. And he, we uh, we talked about the cruise when Steve called in. What was Steve was on, like, what, six, six eight weeks ago? Yeah, not... In the middle of the tour when they were the, the legacy of the beast here in America. So Steve Harris in studio this time here in the New York, in the New York City headquarters very excited about that. That you, a yin and yang, folks. Right. One thing drops out, another good thing comes up.